WP. So my take on that veto is that if we go to three, I think so punch the ticket. Okay, interesting. If we go to three. If we go to three, we'll see if that is the case. But what a match we have ahead of us. Will it be Cloud9 who just seals the deal? Or do you believe in the Portugal Carajo? Do you, Scrawny and Launders? <sighs> I always believe sharks. Of course I believe. Because if we're being real, we're talking about a saw on an 11 match win streak. And when the conversation is around, you know, the level of competition within that 11 team, sure, that's a fair conversation. But one of those 11 is Cloud9. Mm -hmm. And let me sprinkle a little spice on top of this dish. Go for it. The fact that Saw are undefeated on Nuke in 2024. I mean, if you think about that, contextualize what we're seeing from Saw. The very best Counter-Strike these players have ever played, peaking in this moment right here, right now. You're telling me Cloud9, after the last six months of what they've put up, have a chance? If they win this match, you gotta believe what you saw. You know what I'm saying? I'll let them speak for themselves. Electronic's gonna get a good warning, but not enough. Future slides straight down into main. Double kill for him. Muterus comes out with a headshot, and it's looking like a saw T side pistol. Yeah, that's a good tone setter right there. 2v4 from the heavens. With no bomb down means, you know, the 1% chance that the kills go their way, and T's aren't fragging yet. But it feels like Doomsday is upon us here for Axile. With five in the mag, three opponents, and two jerks oh, on it, fire. No, no. Yeah, it's a good, good way to start. I mean, when you know that you jerks and Aristos are, are going to be your guys, which they have been consistent stars, pretty unreal. It's just such a good situation right now. There's like a few teams that have mirrored them where it's like they've taken a risk picking up some new players. Those players have been paying off. They have the nice sort of amount of veterans that understand how to play the game have created a good system for them to thrive under. Um... What can go wrong for Saw? I mean, they have... Oh, that, oh my god. That can go wrong. Oh my god. That right there. That's an AK gone. That Hobbit scout shot that just domes oh, that you. That so sick. That's an example. You know, it's nice you're talking about Aristos, you're talking about Ujerks. It's the fact Story's the highest rated player at the Major so far, right? Now you're adding in this element of AWP to a formula that's already working. And uh, to uh, just... That's a thing. Composition mm -hmm. is so good for Cloud9. And to have an opera. To co-sign the... The, the testament to it, I think, you know, CS2 and the transition to a new game was the perfect chance for some organizations to start to include these newer players, this upcoming generation, you know, out with the old, in with the new, but support it with some veterans. And to me, that is what Saw truly embody in what is the best form they've ever been in right now. Yeah, like, did you see this rumor that uh, Dupree's getting scouted for Falcons? I did. And then someone brought up the average age would be like 30 on that team. Mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, washed. Not, uh, Dupree makes perfect Just sense kidding. in the role, but yeah, you have questions based on that. So the upper hit comes in, you jerk still frying. Hobbit up top. Great shot from him earlier on, but everybody stays aware. And, uh,. Yeah, unfortunately, that is like something you want to think about, right? Like, I mean, that's something that, like, take Blitz for an example. That's the only thing he thinks about. <laughs> How young can we make this team? And um, there's some, there's definitely something to that. I mean, like, uh, even when Sonic had left Vitality, he said one of his calculations was the fact that uh, when Flames came in for Dupree, he was thinking about the longevity of the roster, um, even though there was no problem with Dupree at that moment. And honestly, I think that's a fair approach, right? Because if it does click, if it does click, and if it does click early, you can run with it, right? In Blitz's case, fingers crossed, they're all in their prime by 19. And we'll have to see what happens because we are in a place where, like, you can kind of play as long as you're good, right? Like, I think six or seven years ago, if you were already 30, it was a much harder field to make a living, play at the top level, but like now, you know, Kerrigan, Dupree, like who knows how long they're going to go for. They could be easily competing into their 60s, okay? <laughs> sure. Let's go with that. We don't know the future. Can only hope. Hobbit kicked off that last round with a beautiful scout shot. Nothing else came beyond that point. So let's see if he can try it again. Still hanging on to the old trusty scout. And that's a fair conversation, right? We were talking about the start of this event, kind of the calcification of the op role 
for Cloud9, right? Finding its way into Boomich's hands more often than not. And if anybody was going to do it for this team, I, I, I was happiest with Boomich. But now we're on a map that, again, saw love to play, saw don't lose as of late, and it switches back into the hands of Hobbit. Obviously, the outer player trying to swing with it, but I can't say I'm willing to put more stock in him than I am Boomich. No. And yeah. we'll see as time goes on. Yeah. Whether outside is going to be an issue for him to hang on to. Whether, again, we get an instance of what feels like a glaringly obvious weakness of Cloud9 fundamentally lacking the opera. He's not even the best opera on his team. Yeah. Here comes Story. Oh, look, look at that. that. Scout is working right now. Yeah, so is Boomich's USP. Let's get a little weird here inside the A site. We've got two players for the Heaven support. Roman doing a great job of Ooh. staying stuck down straight beneath so that no damage can find him. Perfecto and Hobbit and Axile all rerouting instantly over towards main. Perfecto's actually going to go... Yeah, what you up to? They're making a ton of sound. I'm surprised that they're starting to give it away with the audio. Now attention turns over towards main instead. Perfecto, you can't walk around lobby. You're going to have to get running if there's any chance of going for the retake. Sure, if you want exits, you can stick around, but there's nothing left to go for this defuse. So in the end, tip of the hat to Hobbit. Scout shots find some damage. You take the majority of the numbers down, and even these last two barely alive. But you got Ujerks up to 6-0 already. Nice clean start on the T side of Nuke. The 3-0 out the gate. Yeah, they don't have the same quality of teams as like, you know, Navi on Nuke in 2021 or Vitality during their streak or Astralis in 2018 or anything like that. But they are undefeated in 2024 versus every bit of competition that they played. And those teams have gotten progressively harder as the quality of the tournaments has gone up for Saw. So this will be the stiffest competition, the highest level, but uh, they've got the most confidence and they have built out such a great base that it feels like they've got a very thorough defense, very thorough attack and it's going to be on Cloud9 to find the very few gaps that exist on their nuke right now. But Hobbit, you, again, those scout shots were so on point. I mean, a shot like that wouldn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. There we go. Early signs of success for Hobbit. Bodes well for Cloud9's CT half. He'll be instrumental. He loses control of Secret as far as the entrance goes, but also lingers. No support outside to help him. Oh my goodness. That was a little sketchy, but he gets <laughs> lucky that's not a pounce. <laughs> I think he wishes he had his gun out. Double up inside of main. They're starting to walk out towards garage. Wow. Good headshot, but Muterus instant with the AK. Umich finds his trade. And then he gets himself a second. Third servings, in fact. Boomich catching another one up close. Nicely done. The IGL holding off on main to post Cloud9's first. Gun rounds make a hell of a difference. I uh, like Boomich as um, an individual player and Perfecto as an individual player as riflers have been so impressive to me on this roster. And there, there definitely have been good things uh, about this team, right? I mean, they can find solace in the fact that, like, yeah, again, like Perfecto, like, even when Perfecto was playing on Navi during their prime, like, he wasn't playing like this. Like, he's just found some kind of freedom in CS2 in this system that helps him really flourish. And I, I think that the that has been extremely fun to watch, at least for me personally. And I think, unfortunately for Boomich, he has the curse of being the best opera on the team, but not good enough to be a star opera. And then his him as a rifler, being aggressive and being an opener is the, the position they need him in the most, right? Okay. Um, because him and Hobbit are going to be sharing sort of like the sort of randomly aggressive opening roles that you would expect to uh, find you open. Why does it sound like all the responsibility then falls on Boomich? Yeah. He's got to do everything? Seriously. Oh, by the way, we also need a caller. And he's IGLing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, I mean, does anybody else have a role? And the other cool part about that is I think like their team play has definitely looked great. Like despite their, their retakes. weird composition. Yeah, wow, their, their retakes, retakes have been are, fire. Yeah. So there are good signs within this Cloud9 camp. As much as feels like everybody wants to come at them for the opping situation, they also continue to truck along. Little tidbits of success here and there, all they need. Hobbit opens with the op kill again. Ramp player may very well be swarmed. And we're not talking fully tech nines, but an AK now exchanging hands. Ujerk's going to try to chase down Axile. Love that little tempered bit of aggression. The fallback's appropriate. The smoke grenade is perfect. And the support was right there. So a chase would have been the end of Saw as far as I'm concerned. Good thing they reroute. 
But there's crocodiles in this moat. He's in the boss fog right now. Oh man, he just pulled away from it. If there's a quiet walk down on top of him, there might be a timing, unfortunately. I think vent's still... Oh no, it is open. Yeah. They're just gonna walk right down. Um, Sight player maybe sees Wait, 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 wait. They, no, 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 they aren't spotting this at all. So, I mean, electronic, this still should be free, but they're literally just gonna get my sight right now. Eh? Not entirely free. Axile stopping the bomb as it tries to jump over. Electronic still. behind him. Arostos going for the plant. He gets cleared out right after. Tech 9 starts <laughs> to fire off, and this may be one of those weird runs where they get the bomb plant, but He's... not a single kill. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe the back sight A player was holding off towards Vent, but I suppose not. Hobbit scared for his life. There's a reason to be. Boomich sticks the defuse. Cloud9 retakes easy this time around. Arguably a bomb plant that should have never happened. Yeah, true. It's... That's such a special part of the map, like that squeaky area right in front of Tetris, because it can be kind of difficult to watch. So many good engagements go down there. It opens up like this trap door into the lower site, this bottom half of the map on this perfectly vertically stacked site. That's so unique to, to CS that makes... I don't know, it's the most special part of any map uh, for me. It creates for some amazing mid-round situations, timings like that. I love when maps have something unique about them, and there's no denying that that is they don't get its character. Out. Yeah. You know, I'm not talking about three bomb sites Or rotating doors. Or dogs. But I'll take a vent. <laughs> well, Axile got that dog in him, <laughs> making sure to hold off versus the pistols. As it's another round where Saw just wants something to be proud of. hobbit has got pressure on him, but he's also got support with him. And right now, dude, there's some nice Ted. Okay, besides the gap that was left for the vent drop, there's been some good buddy system going on with Cloud9. Nobody feels too alone. They never feel like one is too far off from the rest of the pack. And I think this pack is starting to tear back Saw a bit. Yeah, this will, I mean, there's something under and definitely something underrated about the idea that Cloud9 could beat Saw on this map. Like the headline there would be they end the streak. I mean, Saw not only have this, you know, 11, 11 nuke maps in a row, but they've done it in 2024 straight up. Well, like, it's 11 matches in general in a row. I don't know if it's all on nuke. Well, they have 11 nuke wins. I mean, oh, as well? Okay. They're they yeah. undefeated on nuke in 2024. Okay. With 11 key wins. Yeah, or 12. Goddamn. Yeah. What was your stat then? What were... It's 11 matches in a row they've won. Oh, okay, wow, they have a nuke streak in that, yeah. yeah, yeah wow, yeah. okay, they haven't even lost a match in 11? Okay, that's the difference. They've been cleaning up. My goodness. Quick sprint through the squeaky door. This is the guns meant to trade out, and the trades are back and forth to perfection. Perfecto to the double. And with a bomb in front of Hobbit. I gotta say, Hobbit's not missed an op shot yet. Yeah, yeah, he's on it right now. He's Perfect. got a magnet on a scope. Right? Perfect. Oh, it comes through, even the Tech-9 connects, but then he falls um. down. And as he falls down from heaven, he puts himself into Muteris' eyes. That crosshair, perfectly placed. I was not ready for that round. Muteris wasn't either. What a pop-off. That was beautiful. Had to 180 to find his last frag and has to adjust his mouse in Boom. all these weird ways. Electronic has the jump on him, but Muteris has the clutch. Wow. And when we talk about individuals on this team, Muteris is not the one you're expecting at rounds like that. He's surrounded by players who get the rounds like that for him. Mm -hmm. You take those. And I was just trying to praise again, like that, that pack play of Cloud9. They were all there. That was a nice swarm. Didn't give him much time to try and react, and yet the reaction was perfection. That'll get the energy flowing. Like, sorry. Yep. Uh, sorry, so just to correct, the nuke streak is 10 in a row so okay. far. This would be for 11. Okay. Just the fact both those stats are the same number. <laughs> That's so Crazy. Weird. What's going on here? Well, it is, it is the map they always pick. That's very... <laughs> Temp through main. We get uh, an awkward spot for Boomish, but he slides out. And with the perfecto spray from behind, all seems good. 
Nice support again, but Roman has slipped out from Hut and can make things interesting. I, I think you should just be scaling around like back of the site. They but it's like, where did Boomich go, right? There was a player vent, so now it has to have been Squeaky. He's going to go hunting for Boomich, who thinks maybe he's being cheeky. Instead, he's been found out. Ooh. And now the numbers advantage to the player back site means Perfecto's going to have to go big. He will get the headshot and Story's wow. blindsided. The numbers game. That one extra layer that Cloud9 have brings this round right back. Yeah, that's that's real beautiful. They had layers to that one. They've also got an overpass 6-0 win streak because that kind of piqued my interest. Like, they must be good on another map as well if they're just winning every match. So, now the only thing is that, again, it's not like they're a tier one team firmly playing against tier one competition. So, it's 10 wins. But if we want to talk about their best wins, it's that one versus Cloud9. It's a win versus Monty. They beat Ninjas and Pajamas in there, but outside of that, there are no sort of regular names that you'd expect to see. Yeah. So this would be, again, even though it's a rematch, one of their best new victories. And that's the thing is, it's like, again, we can talk about how it's, it's not the biggest names yet. You don't know how much stock you can put in them, but I love the fact that Cloud9's name is on that list. Yeah. It's happened before, recently, just a little more than a week ago. But this one means so much more. years of competing and never qualifying to a major. Now you are on the brink of the 3-0 sweep straight to the elimination stage. They've had a great, I mean, they just cleared the showdown, you know, to get a spot in London. They're about to have an amazing spring season. It's been a big month for Saw. And it ain't over yet. Feels like it's really just getting started. The loose ear jerks on the approach, and Story tries to get frisky, but Perfecto's play's been good. Nice pressure, not letting anything get weird. Glocks will hit the ground, and Cloud9 to the 5-4 lead. It actually feels like, uh, you know, Cloud9 are putting pressure on Saw, but they're collecting rounds here. They still have the T-side that's... Uh, that's uh, dangerous for, for Cloud9 to be so close to in round numbers. So, um, But yeah, Axel having a great day. Hobbit doing well with the op. I mean, these are two massive ingredients for this roster at the moment. Because we can talk about how like sort of the, the bottom half, if you will, of individuals on the team are like playing better than they should. But when we talk about Axel as somebody who's been top five as a rifler, that's the, the peak we're looking to get back to for him. And hopefully, since the structure of the team does look good, eventually, you'd think he should get comfortable. A lot of his spots are solo as well, right? So it's kind of just on his individual practice to get him up to speed in CS2. Feels like it really could be a key to unlocking a whole new level. We've got two players here. Don't forget about it. Hobbit, support right next to him. Not often you see just two players set up this close either, so we'll see if now that he falls back, it draws him right to Electronic. Udrick's not going to check this. Who would check oh, this? Yeah. The opera just falls away. You see that solo up so often. Electronic in the corner, that's a fantastic setup. And now they're going to press into the remnants of Saw. Opera <laughs> up close. Hobbit, I swear, yeah. has yet to miss a shot. A single bullet has not missed from that AWP this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's been good. It's been very good. And it's not. it started with the scout as well the two headshots with the scout, so okay. You could tell from the get-go yeah. that the scope is sharp tonight. And this gun round will fall flat. Story surrounded, dealt with, and the 6-4 lead posted. This will be a reference game for um, Hobbit Op Stands out there. We're coming back to this half, okay? And fair enough, it's been a great half. This is where Cloud9 can essentially take flight. They've got the half uh, half by coming in for Saw. They now have a two-round gap looking for three. They haven't made mistakes. The moments that there have been bomb plants and awkward times, the retake is clean. Get them scared about the thought that the streak could end now. Ooh, no 
cross allowed, held entirely. Now pressure down on Axile, he's gonna thrive. Two Tech Nines hit the ground. Roman desperate for the chase. The P250 connects, but it is the seventh nonetheless. And uh, this is something that I actually like that Cloud9 do philosophically on their CT side, is they, they double up in very like high traffic positions, whether it's like connector, top of connector on Mirage, or it's playing in squeaky in front of Mini. They are very good at having multiple riflers in one location. That is normally a high traffic spot that can get extremely disorienting with the amount of utility and players that can peek from different choke points and play together. Because these are normally spots where like a star player will frag out. But sometimes that means it's good to have additional support. And they're really, really in good chemistry together. Here is another double up inside of Mini. Trades great from Boomich. Doesn't... End up getting the double. Opera's preoccupied. Perfecto, again, these inner trades have been really efficient for Saw, but usually they come out in the 2v3, not this man advantage state. Yeah. Axile getting active in lobby. It'll boil down to this timing versus Muteris. He's waiting for it to come back. And remember, Hobbit saw that oh. silo player, so he's on high alert, but it's a clean shot from the T side at a fifth round win queued up unless Hobbit can hey. throw the clutch out. If Zaiwu can do it, he even rarely ops himself. Hobbit can't see a damn thing. Solar flares from the site. Smokes himself out. Hell yeah. It's desperate. It's dual Berettas versus three. And plucked from the sky. A fifth round out of Saw. That last round on the half, they just crank the dial, hit the A site one more time with aggression, and it works out to their favor. Uh, and you saw they actually had to kill two people inside of Mini and one crossing in front of the smoke in front of Squeaky to get through that. And they did have firepower, but the setup was once again pretty, pretty good for Cloud9. So they come out with a two-round lead. Absolutely nothing to scoff at, but this is pretty. I, I'd say I'd be kind of happy if I was either team at the moment. If Cloud9, I'd be like, okay, I wish I got a couple more rounds, but you know what? Saw our incredibly strong team on Nuke. Gotta say, coming away with um, seven is good. Cloud9 can pick up T side pistol like Saw did, convert for the three points at the start of the half like Saw did. Suddenly, this one feels like it's theirs for the taking. Molotov frag grenade for Perfecto. But this is not a game where we can point to Aristos. This is not a game where we can point to Story and say, look at this new impact. This has been Roman and Muteris with the big moments. And Ujerk's doing his job. It's a train towards the ramp room. Ujerk's can't quite connect the headshot, and he's the first casualty of the pistol. Mm -hmm. Target set to the B site. Rotation down through vent, and they are scrambling to try and hold back some control here. We're gonna get a big fight queued up on double. Beretta's look away. No trade at all. The site player comes back to join them. This is numbers inside of the site, and what's left of Saw has to go and save. Yeah, they were actually too slow into that Oof. setup, and the player on control steps needed to peek first, but instead they let him swing by, and you see that Aristos was believing in his aim, playing it slowly, trying to get his one to slow this attack down, but couldn't hit a shot. Now, he needs to play like that because of the um, kind of rifler that he is. Like, his impact isn't fragging, but he can't get the kills when we have situations like this. So, very promising now for Cloud9. This bomb's about to pop. <laughs> Axile's on the chase. That'll cost him. Radius never surprises. <laughs> He's on the roof, man. Leave him be. Thirteen and five, Hobbit out of the gate. Pistol win. Now we've said that Cloud Nine haven't made mistakes yet. This map. This is where it's most important to keep that very much alive. Mm -hmm. Do not fall to the forest spy that's coming out. You know, we saw Hobbit with some scout shots on the CT side that made things a little sketchy. Saw were able to convert nonetheless. Cloud9 need to replicate it. Electronic. That well, scout rings out like with the Fomus near him too. But he's got enough smoke to work around. He's cautious about that top blue position, so very nicely done. Slipping over towards the secret stairs. And this is El Clasico for Electronic is the outside defaulter. This is just his game. Get secret control first. Does it unscathed. No flank coming in behind him. 
TT rotations. They're Three. prepped actually in a ramp setup. Yes, sir. To go downstairs if they want to. No glass will be broken downstairs. No door swung open either. Electronic just trying to scare them. They feel that scout. Uh, they fall out of it. Yeah, yeah. They go Molotovs and smoke into A instead because those ramp players would have to rotate out from heaven. It's Roman and it's Erostos. And the Deagles don't connect right away. Muteris starts to get active with that Fomis. Still Cloud9 making their move forward. And at the same time, dealing with mm. the flanks that come out, right? Corralling them from lobby into hut. It is excellent. They had options open. They sized up Saw. And when they felt that resistance, they headed elsewhere with no hesitation, right? I think that's key. Get into A before the flank comes out. Beautiful conversion from Cloud9. Yeah, you're correct. I mean, that was a great setup still from Saw with the amount of players they still had upstairs. They didn't freak out and panic rotate when Electronic threw their molly downstairs. So they didn't bite, but Cloud9 still had to make a decision because they won't want to commit, lose a player, and then pick a site while they're weak. And instead, trusted their spacing, their trade fragging, and cleared all the right angles. So, a uh, well-earned round. And uh, this is one of the most desperate situations Saw has been on, on Nuke. I just love the pacing as well from Cloud9 in that previous round. You know, we saw Electronic emphasizing getting into secret first, and nobody in lobby moved a muscle. Nobody shot a bullet. Nobody made a sound. It was all about Electronic stepping up to the plate, and from that point, sizing up their options. Wouldn't be surprised if we get a just mirrored round from the last one, because it worked. For now, he's going to stick around towards Silo. They do make noise in lobby, and now they look to be grouping up strong numbers outside. So keeping it fresh, keeping it very fine-tuned, right? They're not rushing and forcing the issue over top of what could be a dangerous pistol in the pocket. A CZ really the only threat. And it isn't really much of one. Main gets cleared out. Electronics got this whole pack of players right here with them. They're going to spot the top hut player, and now it's just up in the rafters, and this one goes swimmingly for Cloud9. It is from the pistol win to the 10-5 lead, nothing shy of perfection. Only Lin Vision could figure out a round like that. <laughs> I don't know if Lin Vision even knew what was going on in that round. <laughs> Every member of Cloud9 as well coming in with the numbers tonight. Into the tack pause too. Groove wants to get in on the action. Right now, Saw are looking for a top fragger of any kind. Cloud9 don't really have any questions. I mean... Like your Opper and Axile, your Star Rifler, and Electronic, your best player. There's no questions about Electronic even though he's just been slowing down a little bit. It's not been his best month. Yeah, yeah. You know? And specifically versus his game versus Saul last time, like that was the, he was sort of the main problem individually, had an off day. But I think looking at the scoreboard, that does tell the accurate story here for Cloud9. All your right players are online. I mean, there isn't anyone who isn't online. So a nice amount of money in the back pocket of Cloud9. A couple bonus weapons to work with in number 16. And we saw the rifles make a difference for C9's CT side. Now, even though Saw have this massive streak on Nuke, 10 straight, this could be their Roman Empire. Mm. Losing it to Cloud9 at the Major. This is the one that matters. Bit of util pressure inside of the A site. Doesn't elicit too much of a response out of Saw. Honestly, they don't have the nades for the counterplay either, right? One molly, double flashbang, all the CTs have with a minute up. They are going to have to shoot straight, not to mention that Molotov's downstairs. So Hut Squeaky gonna be problematic for Saw. And it feels like this A hit is brewing. The lack of utility is unbelievable. They don't have a single smoke to stop this. No mollies. Nothing. 
It's gonna have to be clean shots from Roman. First one's great. And then the next T doesn't see him. He did a great job of keeping his head down, gives himself another chance, and Roman's coming up with big numbers. Roman's one entry right there, so that's it. I mean, denial of entry. He's looking for oh, more. He's not done yet. Clean with it. <laughs> Three kills from the rafters off of Roman. And he just tucks his head down. That second T looked lost. Yeah. I had no clue where they got hit from. That's, that's the perfecto right there. I mean... Your job is boring as hell as a sight anchor until you have to do everything. Dodge that one flash, turn, find that pick off. It is way harder than it looks. If he doesn't find this kill after dodging that flash in before the next one comes right after, his teammate dies on sight, Squeaky gets blown open, he doesn't drop on the hut and look like Tom Cruise and get the next three kills. The whole round is over and the economy is ruined for Saw, but instead they've got utility now and a chance to actually stage some sort of comeback or CT side. You said Saul were looking for a top fragger in any form. Well, Roman about to step to the to the plate. Big round to do it. It affords them a follow-up gun round. It affords them much more utility than they had in the last, which felt like the glaringly obvious problem. They managed it. They're rewarded for it. Popping the smoke open with a whole pack of T's, but not actually seeing anybody until Electronic steps in. Little jump spot over top. You definitely see them. Now Ooh, you do. That's three. Big numbers confirmed outside. Two CTs in main looking for the gunfight, falling through the fire. Oh. Uterus down to 40 health. But you've also flash. got two players heaven. I mean, there are fights on all fronts right now for Cloud9. This can't feel comfortable. Yeah, the thing is, they know. I mean, they already saw three people outside. That's um, indisputable information, right? They have to... It's Cloud9 who have to try to trick them again, but... Ooh, nice shot. Boomich and Hobbit making sure that they deal with that one peak. And the question is, did he need to peak, right? You had Heaven, he could have stayed in hell. Nice pressure out from Window, but the trade frags from Boomich, that's two kills for him this round. Perfecto's between them, and he looks the wrong way at the wrong time. Suddenly, that main opening that felt like their route in is that much rougher of an approach. And with 25 seconds, do they burn time climbing into Heaven? Or do they try to brute force their way through main as two? Yeah, they're waiting for it. This will be very difficult versus this crossfire. They might know where the CTs are, but... It's good positioning again. Yeah. It's not the Rafters player, but Muterus behind the vent. He gets the trade frag back, oh. and he cleans them both off of the A floor. Oh, that would have been the experienced pieces of Saw succeeding. Yeah, yeah, Muter Muterus right now has uh, had a hell of a game for himself. Already a 1v3. That 2k, if he dies, he can very easily lose the rest of this round, right? It's a 1v1 with a teammate who's far off. And he's playing from opposite vent. It has to be the pre-fire, that crouch spray. Every little bit. Close round, close round. Two straight here for Saw. But uh, it will be costly still. Cloud9 know they could be in for a, a two, a two for a round if they catch one. Just depends if they can invest or not. Now, Cloud9 aren't one of the teams that have tons of good players that have been there before, that are good on land, that don't crumble. They do crumble. With this lineup they have, um, they still have to sort, I think, build some confidence in that regard. So, I don't think we're quite there yet. But at least in this instance right here, right now, you can't point at a single member of their team and say, he is crumbling. Well, yeah, it's still 10-7, right? For now. Everybody's succeeding for Cloud9. For now. Uterus back at it. Dead. Fast entry out of Electronic. No smoke wall up. A set of eyes on the AWP from Heaven. But as he falls down, that means no shot out of the AWP. Which means Electronic's given a chance to fall right back behind Red. Now they're desperately looking for something. And oh my god, Story chasing them outside doesn't... I think... Recognize how many people there were ready to go for a dry cross. So Cloud9 are going to rethink their strategy right now. They've actually just decided to pause and reset. And this innately will burn a lot of time off the clock. Be collecting themselves inside of lobby, putting the Tac-9 into the pack with the rifles. Is that the second support off of ramp, or do they still have two there? Just the one on ramp. Yeah. But it's Stories AWP. First one's free. The 
follow through not quite there, but they do have a player in the close corner and a missed shot from Story lets that second member start to charge him down. Nice shot onto Axile, wounding him. As the pressure towards ramp draws the Heaven player back and this redirection towards A is looking likely. Yep. It is Roman on the CT vent, Electronic his counterpart, Heaven support still nearby, and you've got the anchor back sight. Then you deal with the main player before the squeaky hit comes out. This one's starting to fall apart for Cloud9. They've got Roman pinned in the corner. They're holding him in here, and Whoa. he tears him apart. There's a team kill in the middle off the pistol, but saw the perfect positioning and placement to hold that back. They had just enough time and the right amount of information to put themselves in good spots to defend. So, yeah, that's very good of them. And I, I think Cloud9 buying makes sense because, again, like Saw barely won the round before. They had enough money to get enough rifles to make that competitive, but they had to cancel their plans and Story did a good job of finding his off frag. A couple of times he could have died in that round, but I do like they're still going for it, right? You still you still see their personality shine through as like they're playing as a team who normally wins. It's not like because Aristos wasn't top fragging that suddenly now he's playing passive spots and playing passive, but they can't have that. They won't find the success. I feel like the, that's the kind of buckling you were to get if you weren't on a 10-map win streak. Yeah. If you weren't on an 11-match win streak. You've earned a little swagger in the, in the last month, and you better play into it. I mean, the cohesion is there today for Cloud9. I think this one comes down to the golden call from Boomich. Or some kind of astronomical pop-off from the talent pool of Cloud9 that we know runs deep. Somebody hits a double deagle, grabs an AK, and things get wild. Axile is the first to be dropped in round 19. And, oh, okay. No, nope, not quite. A little bit of damage done. Chance for Electronic to get a little closer, but all seems fine in the Saw camp. I swear, when you put together a super team, one of the biggest things that you buy is like deagle rounds. Mm -hmm. You know, like yep. no matter how bad your team is, <laughs> they're going to get some crazy deagle shots every once in a while. Like that's the main thing that's guaranteed. No team chemistry. There's like no real opera. Don't know who's doing what role, but everyone can use the deagle on a super team. Okay. So it's always scary for team like even with saw in this position to potentially blow a comeback versus some very dangerous individuals but they survive unscathed within one it'll take another rifle round to get to 10. saw gave up a sorry cloud nine gave up a big streak of rounds on day one to ecstatic on an ancient and all the way up until the very end it looked grim until they won this retake and then won three straight i think and uh Show that they were still in it. Ooh. Oh, and man. talking about still in it, and yep. talking about still being himself, your story. Yes, sir. Not shooting like an opera who is currently 8 and 13. Yes, right? exactly. That pressure in the ramp last round he held on to, but a nice slip down from Electronic, and then instantly ejects back through the smoke. A valuable 4v4. Contact from Ujerx confirming multiple bodies on ramp. Ooh. Nice headshot onto Axile. Then he's got them pinned, but they stick around. Trade frag's good. Aristos, wow. a double. They just... And down to Electronic as what felt like the opening to the round also has to be the closer. You can see it right there. They're not even common to each other, right? They actually just believe in the push. Aristos is throwing the flash to set himself up for a play with a teammate who's beside him who he knows is going to come through with the trade. You go back to the first 12 rounds, I'm sat here telling you that it always feels like Cloud9 are nicely tethered. There's always a second layer. Mm -hmm. Same can be said for Saw throughout this game. Even on their T side, when they managed to get into that A site right, it was this constant trade train that left them almost there. So from a 4v5 with a potential ramp collapse, very nice recovery out of Saw. This is the moment, I'd say, for Cloud9. It's their third time out. It's another rifle to set up, and it's um, a little, like, fifth or something go of it on a buy here for the T side. They've got to have Boomich in good spirits right now. With a good plan. See if he can put it together. 
at this point. Winning around doesn't... Oh, that's not even the buy, actually. Ooh, Cloud9 will have to wait one more. Or it doesn't mean it's out of it, but... Yeah. Damn. Here's this play. Yeah, that's just two, three instances, right? Now you get in that last round alone a beautiful moment from the three players that we've been praising as of late. Mm -hmm. The story op shot, the one tap from Ujerks, and the double from Orozdos in order to get that, that ramp held onto. Perfect. Now the win conditions for Saw are falling into place on the CT side of a map that they are very comfortable in clearly. Minimizing mistakes, that's oh. Muterus' job. Double kill on the crossover. Plus a dink. You know, they're just trying to get a little frantic down to the B site to test something with speed, and they're gonna have to do it at the double man disadvantage. No vent drop. CT here and new jerks to watch the cross as the bomb going down. Freebie, Boomich just crossing over before anybody can trade it. Offer comes out. We've got Perfecto <laughs> back, Sight getting peppered through the smoke, and this is gonna be Saw taking the lead. Their 11th on the board, wow. guaranteed, back in control, this win streak set to continue on Nuke. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is more than impressive. And Roman at the top of the board. Looking to add another century to the Empire, okay? Cloud9 finally answer. Right now, Lobby's getting hit. We've got pressure coming out from the CTs. <laughs> They've taken the whole damn thing. They can't have it all. <laughs> Rent's too damn high. Oh. They've got the Lobby, they've got Upper. Uh-oh! Timing! He tries to chase it, and he'll get it! Not the first. That's the solo upper guy. I mean, not even the first five before he's gotten in from main. They're they're going to be scared about scaling into this too quickly. Okay, Aristos comes back after pulling out from lobby. This spot sucks. Yeah, it does. And electronic will get exposed. He didn't feel like he could cross it all. They didn't know necessarily that someone had pushed into squeaky or stayed there. I should say. Exile in this middle of the smoke. This would be another four v five put out from Saw. Would be. Oh, this the three-player hit goes down lower. Nice. Perfecto, he's going to win the Lurk fight inside of Lobby. And with 50 seconds, options open for Cloud9. They could go back up the vent. You've dealt with a couple A players. That's the right move. Perfecto still in the Lobby. Are they going to follow through? Seeming likely now. Opera up in heaven. The last line of defense. Story missed shot Ooh. times two. And as he repeats, Ooh. he hits a killer headshot. Two absent hits into the one they need. The slip up from Vent to get it going. Axile now pinned behind the corner. No. And Story's AWP won't stop. It's a double drop out from heaven. It's Perfecto into the clutch with a critical first kill. And the 1v1 oh. unfolds to the favor of Saw. 12th round confirmed. Oh man, a muterous by a hair. Heller Perfecto was just about to get away from that with information that he was heaven. Could have played to delay. Now the bomb was playing at backside, which was always playing against him. But with that first kill, he set it up for a clutch. But instead, it's been all the clutches to Saw. Wow, all the magic to Saw here in the second half as the streak is going. Seven straight, looking for their 11th nuke win in a row. This one being the biggest, most important, and a rematch versus their toughest competition in Cloud9. Seven rounds in a row, two 4v5s as well, sprinkled within that, and a very sketchy retake needed in the last round. One of the closest moments that Cloud9 have had to breaking through this T side since the guns came out for Saw. And by a hair, Perfecto can't nail it. No. Uterus oh, in back man. with the headshot, as if he hadn't just bested Perfecto in the clutch. Now he's going to just sideline him here in round 23. A superb CT side out of Saw. One that has reeked of confidence in individual moments. No timidness from the individual decision-making of Saw. You talked about story, like the fact that he never pressed tabbed throughout this entire half, never thought about his scoreline, didn't let him affect him mental mentally. Hudrix has to dive this round, they do get ramp. This has usually come at a cost for Cloud9. Remember that double kill from Aristos when he comes in from hell to shut it out? This time, they find footing in it. 
This is uncharted territory for Cloud9, and Electronic wins the Lurk fight in lobby as Perfecto did last round. Can they reclaim this 4v5 into the offer? Electronic gets dropped. Do they see that as a ticket to heaven? They were going to they were going to go back upstairs right there with Electronic. Now they're thinking about lower, but 25 seconds. And they've got stacked. to move. We need Axile Smoke to land in the perfect spot. There is no way they're going to get down here scot-free. It's going to take something good, but what? he jerks. He walks in. He doesn't prepare for that pack of players to be on the precipice of sight. And Muterus, you've got 10 seconds to hold off this bomb site. They're going to go for the plant. And Cloud9, by the skin of their teeth, will put that bomb down. Another retake demanded of Soft. They want to close this out here. But with T's on site, it's a tough spot for Story. Separated from Aristos. A comfortable position for Axile on the rafter. And no clear route in for the retake. Boomich trying to figure out the timing, but he's allowed Story to get close. Missed shot, and that one's going to be costly. No holds oh. from the retake. Oh, they game. lose their grip as Boomich doubles down. They just decided to seek out information where they didn't need to. They had the stack lower. They got uncomfortable at the thought that they had two there with the round maybe going back upper. But when they got that kill on Electronic, they should have believed it because Cloud9 did themselves. And look at that shadow advantage. u -jerks walking back into that playing as if they needed the info. This is an opportunity for Cloud9. They stop the streak at seven, they win one, they get within one of going to overtime. And everybody's got money, the best way to finish a map. That offer has been everywhere throughout this CT side. Oh my God, that's all of, all of Lobby already opened up. Story knows that he's gotta keep his eyes peeled. He's got help. There has to be pressure down on the cross. Electronic sneaks into big garage. And he's not hiding the fact that he's inside garage either. This pressure could draw attention away from any B rotates. Look at the ramp players only now starting to go down. This is a good position for both teams. Electronic's done a good job of making it seem, multiplying his presence in big garage, but they've crossed lower. So I have experienced Cloud9's lurks. So they're being very careful upstairs. And again, the most complicated position so far. Who's going to be the best composer right now between Saw and Cloud9? Critical decision-making in the final 50 seconds of regulation. Don't miss your chances now. Two entry paths queued up for Cloud9's B hit. Door swings, Opera going wide for it. Molotov lands on top of him. Now suddenly Story's uncomfortable. That's the upper lurk. His backside player is going to try to push Decon. Udrix is hot on the heels of Boomich as he departs. Hobbit could keep these players locked into the bomb site. They have Electronic to. gets up into heaven. How does Udrix get back upstairs? He's got to win this fight against Hobbit, but timing is a fickle mistress. And Muterus inside of the hut. He's hanging on for dear life, down to 15 seconds, down to the 2v4. And that bomb plant, it's a fake first. It gets him to bite, and Cloud9 chew through these last two rounds, finding a door to overtime. Oh, yeah, and that's when the pressure is mounted too much. Cloud9 created the most complicated spider web of players across the map. Perfecto wins his lurk duel upstairs, and they take advantage of the perfect rotation. A great T-side call here with great execution and great cohesion from the team that was definitely looking like they were about to lose. And another game goes to overtime when I think that's what it absolutely deserves. Perfecto gets one back. The Perfecto lobby plays. You go back to that back-to-back -back round where Muterus beats him in the 1v1 and then finds him through the squeaky smoke in the round after. Perfecto gets to sprinkle one of his moments in in the remnants of regulation, Cloud9, two rounds in a row to force OT. Uh, I think Saw needs to go for a pick play this round because Cloud9's prerogative at this point is make the map complicated. The best way to steal that away from them is take one out early because then they don't have the ability to fan out without getting too thin. So we have the early aggression inside of Secret. I think this could be a good idea. There's someone waiting for it. Man, dangerous playing with fire. U jerks is still tempted. But even him sitting inside of Secret is such a big denial of information. And if they wait too long, he becomes a flank. I like that Cloud9 are actually 
sitting quietly at the yeah, moment because usually... this is when Saw can get nervous and they still have map control to use. But if they're going to turn this into a straight up mini lurk and electronic gets spotted at 45 seconds, then lower gets removed as an option and Cloud9 can risk becoming obvious. A kill comes down, mauled to deny secret. They have to go up or now. Got two players leaning into the site. Story looking for his second of the round as that deep lobby shot connected. Cloud9 starting to fall victim to the clock. The Hut player looks for his angle, but he goes down empty handed. And now Story's looking for something big, but that close player clears sight. Oh. Excellence from Boomage and Perfecto. It's a desperate vent dive. It's a bomb drop. It's a second repeat from Squeaky, and it falls on Roman to get these last two down. Eight seconds. They've planted on the opposite side of the bomb site. Boomage keeps his head down, but that nade has his name on it. And now Roman's in with the Heaven retake, kicked off with the first. It's a repeat clutch attempt from Perfecto. This time, he doesn't fall away. But this time, the bomb is on his side of sight. Playing in the smoke. It's temporary, but it's also so tantalizing. Roman oh! thinking he can go towards Squeaky Falls and Perfecto enacts revenge. Oof, that was an incredibly tense situation. A well-called setup out the gate, but no opening 5v4 for Saw into the position that Cl that Cloud9 wanted, which was complicated and spread out across the map. So we do have the official counter coming in, but we didn't have that kill. That was the key thing for Saw. They couldn't find it. And even though Cloud9 had one option to work with and Saw had good players in positions upstairs, Saw have gotten nervous when it's 5v5 and the time gets low. Cloud9 have had a consistency in some of their T rounds, right? Even just holding back on lobby. I'm not saying it was always the last 10 seconds. That came out in the tail end when they finally broke through. This is a, a few players had to sort of mess up here in order for this to go correctly or perfectly for Cloud9 as we see how close it is at the very end of the round. But all that matters for Cloud9 is they, if they, they figured out the Achilles heel of Saw at the moment. And again, we're looking for a response. Cloud9 look to do nothing fast one more time. Why should they? Sometimes when you're nervous, there's always a temptation to break your own structure in order to get information. With enough solitude, your mind can eat itself. Contest on the outer play this time. Cloud9 getting into secret for absolutely free. And this starts to feel like Saw becoming a shell of themselves. This is now Saw trying to adapt to minimize those mistakes, but in that adaptation, they are starting to lose their identity. And it was that identity on the CT side that we thought would be tested and would maybe shrivel up. Instead, it's why they got here. It's why they brought this game back. To lose their grip on that now would spell disaster. 35 seconds on the clock again. 10 players alive in this situation. Down to the boiling point once more. Noted. Bomb outside of spawn. At 25, it's got to be picked up. And you know, that's not making it downstairs at the moment. So this floor kill. Oh my god, electronic shoots at ghosts. Uterus locked in though. He can't get back to the site. Beautiful headshot. 10 seconds, they are playing with fire and Cloud9 burnt to oh. a crisp. Okay, Saw show they're still alive. And uh, that might be pushing it to its absolute limit in terms of the clock, so there it is, Cloud9. They try it again, it doesn't work out this time, and it's a little bit more simple with their upper attack. They get no lurks off, they do have Saw desperately jumping around, trying to gather as much information as they can safely, not giving them that one kill but not converting every round on T-side isn't the worst thing that can happen. There's one more try. Let's see if Saw are fully clued in right now. We haven't seen any aggressive outer setup. I think that's the thing that's been missing. Here it is. Okay. Oh, but there it goes. Oh my god, he's having the opportunity to flank oh, perfectly. This is massive. They're making wait, a ton of sound. Wait, yeah, there's going to be a third person. And that third person doesn't have a gun out. Axile trying to catch up to the two front runners who are a hell of a distance ahead of the pack. Now, lower is compromised, but at least you picked up your 5v4. And they call the timing. He knows they crossed. 
the perfect moment to throw somebody at the front of Silo, and they're rewarded for it. But meanwhile, what if Cloud9 simplify things? What if at the minute mark, they decide to hit this because you do have the bomb? Uh, a missed flash, but a follow-up from Electronic. They're gonna try to take over the site, but guess what? Nobody's here. Yeah, there's actually no rotation whatsoever. Muterus, you did call this timing, right? But how many times has a player gone downstairs and it's just Electronic and they never committed to the B site with it? This time, Cloud9, sensing that maybe they're on the back foot, just decide to put that bomb down, let those lurkers upper try their thing, and Boomich, well, there's a double headshot. Holding off in Heisenberg. Next player at bat, gets the trade frag back. Story falling to Hobbit, but now these upper players have to get downstairs. Luckily for Cloud9, Electronic's gone forward, clearing the diffuser. You jerks, oh. not able to hang on, oh. and it's C9 with two in the overtime T side. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know exactly how to justify that situation for Shaw because in my opinion, it looks like they aren't ready at all for there to be problems downstairs. It's good that Cloud9 sped it up this round. They went straight for decon without overthinking the situation. But usually before this door opens, before control side opens, before the window's broken open, and when the timing's called going downstairs, that's when you slide a CT into clock, into dark, or get one in a good position because one in the site allows for someone else to rotate into support. If all your players are rotating in, then vent becomes a dangerous place to go. Ramp becomes dangerous to get into. So... In my opinion, that looks like they don't even know that uh, downstairs is potential issue. Meanwhile, the bomb is there with two players ready to attack it. But not knowing that feels impossible with the red play that Saw throw out of the gate. Yeah, and the other option is not believing it. Um, but I don't know why they wouldn't. The only thing, you know, would be if he thought it was only electronic right. who is the outside lurk. One guy without bomb. Who sit in secret and chill. Sure. And they didn't want to overreact to that kind of information. But they did see someone coming with Electronic. And I thought that they heard two pairs of footsteps already crossing. It has to be that. Because the thought of Electronic without bomb in lower is a much different story than the thought of two players downstairs with bomb already. Regardless, glaringly obvious issue foresaw in the last round of OT. Now their T-side, which they also struggled with, Forget not that the defense from Cloud9 was solid with the rifles and they've got them working already. Boomage, gonna stuff Roman on the approach. It's a wrap back around sight. They lose track of Perfecto, but they find him. And it's Boomage to post the double kill as he gets back into main. Axile pressure out from heaven, looking for his fight. He'll waste no time as he dives back sight. The trade comes out, but it goes right back into the hands of Saw, thanks to Story. Is the bomb back sight? Yes, it is. Hobbit on this line. Molly goes into Mini. That just means you can't push in. You still have vision. Oh, he's got a gap to work with, though. The Hut player's coming out. Hobbit oh, it's a miss shot. shot. Finally, a miss shot from the op, it seems. And attention turned instantly up towards heaven, but Boomich is wrapping this main. What does this mean if he goes Tetris in this spot? Are they going to be able to dislodge him? Muterus might be in the key spot here. Boomich to lobby. I mean, this is going to come down to the final few seconds, and they played regulation down to the wire, but as seen, Kit on site to be grabbed. Hobbit trying to get this one unraveled, trying to make them force their move. Both known. Story now turning back towards Hut. This close box spot needs to be clear. Time is of the essence, and this retake is going to find nothing. A rock-solid hold from Saw to lock in the Tide 14. And it starts out 4v5, yeah. and they just juggernaut it out onto the A site, splitting Squeaky and through the Hut, find their trades. They did have one or two upper pops in that first half that worked out or were pretty effective. Cloud9 could take that on the chin. It's a tie game, but uh, it's still their CT side that they've got to look forward to. So, one has to assume you would still rather be Cloud9 in this position. But they can't let Saw get that confidence back. Wasting no time. We're going to throw Hobbit over towards Secret. Oh. Ramp pressure for Axile. Uh-oh, uh -oh, he's slowing Whoa. this. Falling back, does get away. Little oh. chip damage thanks to the nade, but here they come. A whole pack of soft players ready to exchange, and he goes in. He swings for it, taking new jerks off the round. But the trades go to the favor of Saw. A fight down in sight. Electronic extends into the open. What? Gets the second. 
And to equalize this back to a 2v2, Eris goes locked in, and Electronic can't finish off his food. But look what's left. Tidbits bits of HP for Saw. Oh my a god. Back slam no! denied. Oh. Eris goes turns, and Perfecto can't close. Two tagged kills. We're talking about two players, a bullet or two away from death, and Aristos flicks around to get that. Of, I mean, that would have been a very hard 1v1 to win. The bomb would have been out in the open on the B site. And we just have to sail past this moment because Cloud9 now have to think about the next round. We've already got double OT locked in for Saw in a situation that uh, it felt like Cloud9 were going to make magic happen here, denying the comeback. Look at the buy. They went to Value Village for this one. Whoa. The shortcomings of 10k rear their ugly head. Deagle MP9. And Saw's third chance to close out map one. Saw are calling an anti-eco. The economy is crystal clear here for their opponents. The first portion of the round goes to holding any aggressive moves. That we, clutch felt queued up. Seriously. And instead you find yourself in this position, minute on the clock at the end of OT. This one's called out of spawn. They're waiting. They're not even taking secret control. CTs. They have to be careful if they put no pressure on the map whatsoever, that late smokes completely block their exec. Saw don't know what Cloud9 do. Saw don't know what Cloud9 oh, have. Man, and uh this is this oh. is this is a perfect lurk defense here. Drop a smoke down from uterus. He's thinking about back garage, but it's really Hobbit in the close corner. Zeus and Hut. Huge moment for that Zeus to come alive, and he nails oh. it! Perfecto electrifying the A-site. Utrex tries to dive to his teammate and Electronic, he's got it! Oh. Perfecto into the AK thanks to the taser. And Cloud9 just got to drop this off for 10 seconds. Story in the clutch, surrounded in what feels like an impossible spot. He tries to keep it alive, but that $200 Zeus is exactly what they need to defibrillate their chances. Yeah, that's what Valve wanted, encouraging people to buy the Zeus. That's been one of the best positions to have it in, and it comes through at a key moment. And that is, again, the risk of playing around slowly where you have such an uh, economic advantage. You're not pre mollying hut and taking out the close positions, playing fast to deny close up positions like this. You are risking gimmick kills like that. So Saw came through timid, hoping to just stick, stick the landing and play it safe, and it ends up costing them the round. Cloud9 win with almost nothing. Fast one. Pressure out, smoke gets popped. Roman, he Great wants flash. the entry. Nicely done to crack it open. Sure enough, the hut player comes out as well, and Cloud9 will be given no respite, no chance to breathe, no chance to catch their breath. They're like ready to keep this game going. They do not waste a moment. It's their T side and overtime continues. Cloud9 have put on some classic retakes lately, but not too many have come on Nuke. It's obviously not that easy. That's a big call to make, man. That execution is perfect. You saw the second layer to the flash after they naded the smoke. Oh, sh shoot. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> All three from Saw die. Okay. So maybe creates an opportunity for another round loss. I don't think so, though. Yeah, they win this one. It's enough recovered. Props to Saw, though. Cranking that tempo dial to They a take gets popped right here. Wait yep. from Roman into the flash. And then Boomish dies. Eats it completely. Just wants to... Everybody is tempted to spam the smoke. That's why you have this old Furious strat where Art would run through the the squeaky smoke as they drop bent because pe teams are always going to spam you running out of squeaky. And then a flash would come out and try to kill you up. Right now it's just the upper exec that comes out with it. You're a bit of pressure. They tried to show that they're going to do the same strategy to get an overreaction out of Cloud9 to yeah. defend against it. But they never naded the door. 
Not out of the gate. So in contrast to the last round, we're going to go for the slow burn outside saw. Honestly, this dwindling utility for the T's, but around the smoke, they'll go down secret unspotted. Yeah, this but is... they all have to do the same thing, and oh, they don't. Oh, what a shot. Story takes a slightly different route, and Hobbit clips him on the cross. That's a big mistake out of Story. I mean, as an opera, you'd think that's the fight you want, but he wasn't using it. Boomich, we've already seen multi-kill potential from this exact same angle. Or at least it was a little wider last time. Now he's tucked right on door. Slight variation, but demanding the same result. Two players coming at him for the trade, and he gets the first one. The half damage on Udrix is big, but there's no second CT in sight. Luckily for Cloud9, they do find that upper hit, and then Roman is given a gift. Axile coming out before there's any trade potential. Still man advantage. Oh. Still Hobbit hitting op shots, but it's also Roman over towards Secret with a real chance at that second kill. He's got the picture figured out. They have him pinned towards control, and with windows closed, that cross wide out in the open. And as he turns it back down towards double doors, Perfecto instantly into the site. He's been trying to win clutches all night, and they've gone both ways, but he's got the cover, and he's sticking the deep fuse. A five-second stick down oh. to the wire. The peak not on time, and Perfecto brings one back. Oh, he stretched those cords out as far as he possibly could. And man, for a second, it looked like that gift was a Trojan horse. Roman nearly won that clutch for himself and saw, and instead it's denied. That's a heartbreaker because you see where that bomb's be it planted, and in your mind, you're going to think that it can't be diffused from that angle. So that's fair enough. But good on Perfecto for identifying that as quickly as possible. One more second on the clock, and of course, he would have gotten swung. A very nice try out of Roman. Again, rarer to get him as one of the two veterans on the team at the top of the board. Oh, here we go. What a welcome sight. Nice, a new direction. And another common oh. problem, the A site crumbles. Excuse me? Axile towards ramp, all they have left. They keep it simple with a slight variation, that reroute over top of main. You can see Boomich going on top of Hut, not dealing with the potential squeaky hit that cost him last time. And instead, it is Saw with two rapid rounds in OT that work. That's it. They just have been copying and pasting on this upper rush that just seems basically unstoppable. Axile forced into this desperate situation. Four sets of eyes What's glaring up at him. Even, He's not even trying to win like, it. Yeah. So you literally have no time for the defuse. A wet fart of a retake. Saw takes 17. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, no, no chance for that one before. It's just like, why, should, why do why, why do you guys want me to call anything else? <laughs> so Saul will take an edge. Oh, man. The most successful T side of the three halves in overtime so far. Yeah, very much. Cloud9 have to up the ante. Two out from winning the map are Saw. Two out from a third overtime are Cloud9. They'll need three in a row to win here. Now, in total contrast to what Saw just threw out in this T side, man, we've had some real slow burns for Cloud9's offense, but this forward spot gets punished. It's both oh. the ramp players dead. It is a 5v3 in the opening round of their second OT. I mean, Cloud9, this feels like a God-given gift. But it could all be taken back. Yeah, right. If Electronic wasn't that sharp, jumping in over the control panel, Cloud9 pushing the right buttons this time, and we're tied at 17. Yeah, they were on the Fury Road on this round, in through ramp, in the lower, like it was no one's business. Instant transmission, beautiful entries, Cloud9 instantly tie and take a wind out of the sails of Saw from that last round. Very powerful attack. I mean, I do appreciate that Saw, again, they haven't changed their character. And I think that's been the, uh, I think, the part of this match that has had me believing in them the most, which is that, uh, you know, we are really respecting Saw as a team that aren't scared of anybody. And even when they're down, they still play like themselves. Much easier said than done. Hanging on. 
They know money could become a problem. Yeah, that M4 is good to go. Yeah, I'm actually a little scary for Cloud9 because I don't guarantee that they win this round either. OT timeout is coming in for Saw. It's moments like this that gimmicks actually win you the map. Um, CT side, again, they're, they go for so many different types of pick plays. Uh, and I have been pretty good at defending against the extremely aggressive maneuvers. And even in rounds where the lobby has been taken over uh, by the CT side, Cloud9 have done well giving up space and just playing Scorched Earth, letting it, letting it be theirs, taking another part of the map in exchange. It's not even like Cloud9 where forcing an opening in that last round, right? It was two kills presented to them with the failed ramp push. Curious to see what they wanted to get up to. Credit where it's due, though. They were so ready to follow through after those frags and electronic through the smoke. Looking to test ramp yet again. This time it's just Udrix back. Oh. And willing to go down, but Electronic, he's going to try to follow forward. Fire forces them to hold. Nice way to win that. Axile really gets hit low here inside of the lobby. This is the point of the round where even damage matters. No kills yet, just for the moment. Muterus also low. This is the kind of map control that can get the CTs to make bad rotations. And I mean, Cloud9 have set this up conditioning in a conditioning perspective that they could go upstairs at any time. We've seen them use the late rotations. They punish soft for pushing late. I don't know if they will this time. It looks like a good timing inside the lobby. Just waiting for this angle. Doesn't get the kill. Great amount of damage, but it's simultaneous pressure. Muterus, the lurk out through the smoke is caught. Another player is going to have to pick up that bomb and put it down. Will they cover off Roman? Yes, cover fire through, connects. Oh my god. And with that, it falls into the 2v4, but think about all the damage. Is it enough to justify? Not with the lack of money. They almost got cleared out in the last round. These guns are instrumental. Wow. Cloud9's slow burn to the B site with all those players ready to roll gets them their 18th. And, and fair play. They've been so good at denying trades on this T side with those entries. The double kill inside of ramp, countering the exact aggression Saw wants to get away with into the lower setup. Or you've got Udrix in this peephole. He's got the angle he wants. He has enough time for the spray, but can't get the kill. And is not ready at all for uh -oh. somebody to be coming out of control. And now around where it looks like they should have just gone for the retake. Story has a second to stay alive oh. and he doesn't. Oh God. The money. Oh, it's so bad. This is now to fight for a third overtime. And the very first chance for Cloud9 to close this map. Yes. They have clawed three of those opportunities out of the hands of Saw. This is their first. And the only reason Electronic's able to catch Ujerks is because he doesn't get his kills through that peephole right away. And he doesn't. And there's also, again, no defense against control side at all. What's the buy look like? How little do they have? Because we saw Cloud9... Definitely not enough for an op. Remember that Zeus? Remember that MP9? The bare bones by Cloud9 were able to utilize in order to keep this game alive. Honestly, they come out pretty damn okay. Yeah, that, that, could, have been, that could be worse. But again, the low utility, it's going to be very obvious for Cloud9. There are big advantages here. But what's the, what's the call? Because... Again, we've seen some of the best rounds from Cloud9 not be fast ones. They've been a lot slower, but they've also messed up the, on the clock when they really pushed it. And I think Saw also have clued into the right way to play against this. Their biggest issue is do they have the resources? Oh, oh nice yeah, position. That, that could be a great position here for Muterus, but also a hell of a spot to try and fall back from. 
And there's not just one solo Lurk outer play. There are four players coming at him. And as he looks to strike, he misses oh. his chance. Sure, it's damage. And Story not able to capitalize. Hobbit survives it. It's Aristos to come out from main. The bomb delivered on his feet. And he delivers himself. Yo, we're going to run it back, aren't we? A second kill off main. Low HP to Hobbit because of that initial position from top garage. What can Perfecto do? He has been so valuable late round. Hobbit in the first half. Perfecto throughout. They have to pause. The bomb can be camped. It's two good spots to watch, to hold on to everything. But sometimes the trades haven't been there for Saw on this CT side. And I love, again, using the clock to make him nervous. It's been such a contributing factor to cloud Nine's success. Any of these it, players make a step. Perfecto's going to hone in on him. Oh, he gets his chance. He gets his kill. It costs him half his health. Do we have a molly? No molly for opposite vents. The peak comes out. Roman oh, dies! No! Perfecto getting a second. And and then suddenly Udrich, he can't catch Hobbit. He's got a clean cross and a smoke in main to put this bomb down. Again and again. It comes down to timing. They squeeze them and Saw's knees buckle in these moments. But here's the retake coming in. All that early damage done. And he thinks it's a planner. Hobbit got off sight. He's crossed over. Oh. The shot's missed. Udrich's got... 40 health. The bomb is planted, front sight. And now as he gets on top of it, he's gonna tap it and he's gonna clear out this hut. It is Hobbit to have crossed back, seeing that it's not there. He knows exactly what is up. The oh. knife is out and saw it go down. Oh. Cloud nine in the second OT will close. Oh my God, after that, what an absolute journey, man. That was beautiful. An amazing game here on map one for Cloud9, a big victory, and they finally put a dent in the streak that's 10 and one now in 2024 for Saw.